Hey everybody, this is Erica, the technology nerd likes to film stuff. Look what just came in the mail. This is the Huawei Mate 9. This is meant for the United States market. I've actually had the Mate 9 for a little bit of time now. This is the unlocked model. And I do want to take a look first before doing any type of a review on this at a model that's meant for United States carriers. This unit right here seems to have an outdated firmware. And from what I understand, there's been a couple of things that I've had trouble with this where an updated firmware should fix it. I don't know why I can't get this one to update, but let's just set it aside. So right here is a space gray model. I actually really prefer a space gray model, especially on such a big phone. I feel that blackish phones look much nicer. I can't get this open. This is what happens when you cut your nails. That is some impressive shrink wrap there, Huawei. All right, let's go ahead. Ah, much, much easier. Now we can get behind this. There we are. Huawei Mate 9. Ooh, and already, yes, I do quite like darker colored phones. Immediately, this looks like a smaller phone to me. This is a display that's almost six inches in size. Another reason why it's nice to have a darker phone, especially with the face, is because you can see that we've got this white little bit of bezel here. Black looks a lot less distracting. I like this already compared to my silver one right here that has this little case on. This just feels and looks a lot cleaner somehow. Let's go ahead and remove this back bit here. There's a nice screen protector that is pre-installed. Although I'm hearing from some people when they leave the screen protector on, they're having some touch screen issues with sensitivity. What's interesting though, is I'm having that issue without the screen protector on, on this unit. When I try to tap on things, there is quite a delay if it even listens to me at all. And when sometimes when I try to select things, it thinks I'm trying to scroll instead. That has been aggravating to no end. Hopefully a updated version such as this will be much better. Let's go ahead and see what else is in the box. This should be just like the international experience, except for I should get a plug that will work here in the United States. I haven't had a chance to check out that really awesome fast charging because I have a European plug. So we've got some earphones. It looks like a little adapter here for probably data transfer. Here we have a sync and charging cable. Then when we open up this side, Aha, there you go. A United States charging brick. I can't wait to try this out. From what I've been told, Huawei with charging speed really does give OnePlus a run for its money. So in this little box, we get a nice little case, some documentation and a SIM ejection tool, which is right here on the back. Let's see my case here. It's an interesting diamond-like design. I like that matte finish on the back though. Let's go ahead and pop it on. Eh, that looks nice. Although I'd probably prefer it to be clear. A very, very minimalistic case. You can see it just hugs the edges here. This should allow just a little bit of a lay on the table design and protect it from scratches. Is that everything else? Anything else in the box? No, oh, I think that is all. Alrighty, so now I just got this set up. I just wanted to quickly bypass that process, set up the fingerprint reader. I pulled off the screen protector. I don't care for screen protectors. And immediately now I can see that I am on an updated firmware, or at least better than the one I have right now. I think I'm on B102. That was the firmware where you still did not have little notification icons up here at the top. Now you do have notification icons. It doesn't just give you a number, an obscure number. You have no idea what it means. So that's nice. That's already a nice change. It does feel more responsive already, touch-wise. So already I am much happier. This is a whopper of a phone, man. What do I got here? Let's see. This is the LG V20, and if you've been used to carrying around a large phone like the V20, this isn't going to be any shock to you whatsoever. Take a look at that. Actually, I believe the V20 is a little less wide, just ever so slightly. It does make a difference in my hand, though. I notice that difference. This seems to wrap a little bit better. 
where this one's a little bit more cumbersome to wrap my hands around. Granted, I've got dwarf hands, all right? This is the Google Pixel. To most people, this is what the Pixel XL would look like. But this is the perfect sized phone versus Big Mama here. Now here we have it side by side by the silver one. You can see on camera that there is a little bit of a difference. It's actually more subtle of a difference than I thought it would be. But even the metal seems to have a little bit different of a coloring here. But really, there's no competition here. Such a large phone really does belong in black, in my humble opinion. So I did take quite a bit of time to play around with this phone and I got a certain impression to it. There is essence here of awesomeness, but there were a couple of issues going on with the firmware. So it was hard to really let the awesomeness fully shine through, and that's really where I'm expecting things to change here. I think there was also an update to the camera, so all the camera samples I've taken thus far are moot. As I understand, it was a big enough update to make a difference. So here is our dual camera. We have a 20 megapixel monochrome sensor and a 12 megapixel color sensor. We've got laser focus assist, dual LED flash. You can see that's dual tone LED flash. We have a microphone right here. Optical image stabilization. The fastest fingerprint sensor and probably the most accurate one that I've seen on the market. I have been able to glean that so far. It's incredible. You barely have to touch the thing. Looking at the right hand side, you've got your volume rocker, power button. Left hand side is nice and clean except for just this little SIM card slot, which is dual SIM, or you can have a SIM and an SD card. So 64 gigabytes of internal storage and also the option for an SD card, that's nice. Then at the top here, we have an infrared blaster, which is not common anymore. It's nice that we have the same thing on the V20. So thankfully there are still some options out there for those of you who like to use your phone to also control your TV. You've got a headphone jack. That's not something I should have to praise, but it's there, just so you know. Then taking a look at the bottom, we've got a microphone and a speaker. You can see that this looks nice and symmetrical. Then we've got a USB-C port for charging. It seems that they use a proprietary fast charging. Then taking a little bit of a look around this phone, it is a really nice phone. I do like this chamfered look. You can see that we've got a bit of a chamfer here and also here as well. When holding it in my small hand though, this isn't the nicest feeling phone. I think I've probably gotten used to the likes of the Google Pixel where it's nice and rounded. Same thing with the iPhone. This feels a little bit more sharp, but thanks to having this chamfering, it doesn't feel so slippery like the Google Pixel does. We've got an LED notification on the front. You can see it going off there. Ambient light sensor, proximity sensor, our front facing camera. Then with our receiver, what's interesting is that this is also a speaker. So this is considered kind of a stereo setup. You've got a woofer on the bottom, so you have the lower frequencies and the tweeter comes here at the top. So this is for all the high frequencies. It's the same setup as the HTC 10, and that is not my favorite setup for a stereo-like setup. Jeez, I used to think this phone was big. But so far with what I'm hearing, they sound pretty nice, pretty loud speakers. What I want to do right now is take a little bit of time to play around with this before I can really give much of a impressions because what I think about this phone has been sullied by my poor experience with my reviewer model. I'm confident now I'm going to have a much better experience with this phone here. So far though, I am enjoying this big and beautiful display. I was a little bit worried at first that this is only 1080p at about six inches, but when you look at this, it looks just fine. Everything looks nice and sharp, you really would not know that this is 1080p when looking at larger icons and larger text. The one place you notice that this is not a Quad HD display is when you go and make all of the font elements and all the elements in general smaller. So if I say view mode and I say small, when I have a really big screen like this, the whole purpose of that for me is to be able to really see a lot on here. I don't want big, huge icons and big huge text on a display this big, it's kind of redundant. But once I go to this smaller mode, the pixel density doesn't hold up as well as it would if it was Quad HD. Let's just let that restart. Still, we've got battery life and graphical advantages. This is a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. This is huge, an absolutely huge battery. 
And with having 1080p on the graphics front, that should help with battery life. It should help with a little bit better scores in the graphics. In day-to-day -day use, though, in games, you're probably not going to really notice a difference unless you're playing something really intensive. That's where having a 1080p display can be a little bit nicer than having to be bogged down by Quad HD resolution, having to push all those pixels around. That certainly puts more weight on the GPU. Most people are going to like a font size that's normal, just like this, maybe even a bit larger, but I like small. And then you can see that that really is quite tiny, but it does feel like suddenly the real estate of this display opened up. But again, when I'm looking through web pages with smaller text, that's where I really do miss that pixel density. But still, it, it's good enough. Most people are not going to complain about this. So I'm going to miss my Google Pixel. This has been my daily driver for a few months now, just really because of the size. And it's got a beautiful display on this thing. But let's see how I do with this big monster. If you want to have an idea of how big this, this is for me, look at my hand sitting in the display. Most people's hands are probably like this. So this is gonna be quite cumbersome to carry around. So I'll let you know how it goes. I don't know if I'm going to be doing a full review on this phone, probably more or less just an advanced impressions because we have Mobile World Congress just right around the corner. There's gonna be a lot of phones released. You guys need to let me know what your interest in this phone is though, in terms of how much to review this. A lot of people right now are saying that this is a great replacement for the Galaxy Note 7. But with everything coming out, people might decide that they want to pass this one up entirely. Let me know what you're thinking right now. This is a $600 phone. It's not an extremely expensive phone, but $600 is a nice chunk of change, especially when you have to buy it unlocked. So this is all that I want to say for now. I'm gonna go play with this, see if my feelings about this phone change. I really think that they will. It's really unfortunate, I'll be honest with you, that my first impression was, ugh. Ugh, I don't, I don't like this phone. It's not particularly responsive. The battery life is not very good. At least not with what I was expecting. I couldn't even charge it quickly because I didn't have the right charger for it. So please be patient. Make sure to ask your questions. This has been Erica, the technology nerd likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Also, let me know what you're excited to see at MWC. I'm going to be there. I will be at all the different press events. I will try to get as much coverage as I possibly can. Let me know what you want to see with this and MWC, and good night.